There's a tone I've been chasing since the start of this channel, and that's Nirvana's Rape Me. For whatever reason, that tone is just so hard to get right. I've been experimenting with different amps and different guitars, but I think this new combination is the closest I've ever got. You're probably wondering why I'm using a Fender Tornado instead of a Fender Mustang or Fender Jaguar, and there's actually a pretty good reason for that. Kurt Cobain's Fender Mustang had a Seymour Duncan hot rail, and so does mine. It sounds good, but it doesn't sound right. Hot rails sound very dark in comparison to the tone I'm after. And same thing with the Fender Jaguar, it sounds good, but not right. So the reason I'm using my Tornado is because of this pickup. This is a Bardellini V88D. I believe it's the same pickup Kurt Cobain had in his Farrington Mustang. I'm actually in the process of getting a complete Farrington replica built. That guitar was said to have been used all over the In Utero album. But what's more important than the guitar for this tone is the amp. There's a lot of misinformation about what amps Kurt had in the In Utero recording sessions. A lot of people think Kurt had a twin reverb there, but Steve Albini says only three amps were used, and none of them were the twin reverb. One of the amps was a Fender Quad reverb. I have one, and again, it sounds good, but not right. According to Ernie Bailey, the second amp was a Marshall Plexi, modified to be a dual showman. Albini says he doesn't recall seeing the amp there, so it likely wasn't used much. The last amp is a Randall Commander head. I have the RB120 and Kurt had the RG120. They're the exact same thing, except the RG120 has reverb and tremolo, which Kurt kept off anyways. The Randall is an amp head, which would need to connect to a speaker cabinet. But what cabinet could have been used? In 1991, before Kurt used Marshall cabs, he used a Hi-Watt LA-412. This can be seen at the Beehive show, as well as other Nevermind era shows. Kurt quit using this cab, and if I had to guess, it's probably because he didn't want to ruin it. Kurt didn't use his competition Mustang live often because he didn't want to ruin it either. The Hi-Watt LA-412s are loaded with Hi-Watt Legend speakers, but some of the later ones have Celestian 12T75s. There's also the LS-412, which is the straight cab version, which Kurt also used in 1991. Look for the brackets around the speakers. If you see them, there's a pretty good chance the legends are in the cabinet. It's not guaranteed though, but most of the 12T75s don't have the brackets. My cabinet has legend speakers, and for some odd reason, the Hi-Watt 12T75 sound a lot like the legends, and nothing like a regular 12T75. I don't have a Hi-Watt 75 to compare, but I have a friend who does. I'll pass the video on to him. Well, howdy there. How's it going, guys? All right, so this is a hi -Watt LA-412. Kurt Cobain had one of these, and they're really, really neat cabinets. I really like them. The front comes off, and you got the speakers inside, which is super duper cool. These are really, really unique cabinets. Now, there were two different versions of the LA-412. There was the early 80s ones, which had a really transparent grill cloth. You could see right through them, and the speakers were front-loaded. And those were loaded with High Watt Legend series speakers, which I actually have. I have a Marshall cab over there loaded with those. Now, the version that Kurt had was the later ones, and these later ones were loaded with 12T75 speakers. The reason I know this is I actually went to Mopop and saw Kurt Cobain's High Watt cabinet. All right, now that you know what this is, I'll go ahead and shut up and I'll play some stuff through this one and then I'll put my Marshall cab over here that has the Legend series speakers in it and I'll play that one. I know a lot of y'all are going to say like, ah, oh, but Aaron, it's not a fair comparison, it's a different cab. Well, these cabs are the same exact dimensions, they're made out of the same wood, same everything, so the only difference is one's going to say Marshall on the front and this one says High Watt, but that's it. Alright, let's do it.
By the way, more on this cab later. All right, JQ. Take them away, brother. And just to compare, I have some 12T75s from the same era. And another speaker Kurt was known for using is the Celestian Vintage 30. But anyways, these high watt speakers sound a certain way that I haven't heard from anything else. It's very possible this cabinet wasn't used on Inubero, but it sounds great for the Inubero tone. So yeah, this is the obscure Nirvana amp. It sounds a lot different from my other amps. The Randall Commander Head and the Hiwat LA-412 are both rare and almost never come up for sale, unfortunately. Neither of them are too pricey, though. They're just hard to find. And speaking of hard to find Nirvana gear, this is an original early 80s polychorus. It's totally different from late 90s stereo reissues, and the newer ones also. I thought I'd include it in this video while I'm on the topic of an Negro tone. The original polychorus is the same exact pedal as the echo flanger. There are some slight differences. The echo flanger on full looks different from the polychorus on full. That makes it hard to follow Kurt's settings on the echo flanger, but they sound pretty much exactly the same other than that. They use the same circuit and all the same components. I prefer the polychorus just because it's easier to follow Kurt's settings. I used to use tape to mark where the settings would be on the echo flanger. That's pretty much it for this video. Thank you all for watching and please consider subscribing if you made it this far. I'll catch you in the next one.